Hi, it's Mike I'm back. Just took some Tylenol, so I'm feeling wonderful. Yeah, right. My back, shoulders, and just below the shoulders is just being a little problematic, so I may be doing a few videos where you see me in the same shirt for a bit. But I want to talk to you today about the colloquialisms. And we get so used of talking to diabetics all the time, or diabetic nurses, or diabetic doctors, that we start getting some slang. Hypo. Hyper. You know, yeah, I was really down low. Well, that was, I mean, that was pretty easy. But you don't say, hi, I've heard, I'm up, up and away. But remember that when you're talking to someone outside our diabetic community. Because a lot of these terms are going to go right over their heads. And they're not, these people aren't stupid by any means. <clears throat> but they are I swear they have a lack of understanding of the diabetic terms I'm talking even the regular terms hypoglycemia diabetic ketoacidosis you know and when you're talking to people about oh I had diabetic ketoacidosis the other day they're going to look at you like, God, you're one strange person. But you know what? Maybe say I had DK, you know, and you can do a brief description. That's okay. But just carry on a whole conversation with someone who's not regularly in the diabetes world. That's my big magical. Then... You know, it could be very misleading. Now, I this idea came to mind that I really should be maybe a little bit more explaining on terms that I use for everyday, my everyday chats here. I'm going to try to describe. And if I don't, by all means, leave a comment below. A constructive comment. Now... There's so much that we have to have. We have to have pump things. We have to have a machine for glucometer, a machine for ketos, a machine, well, if you want to have it, you can have a machine that also detects whether you have large ketones in the blood um, or how your hemoglobin A1C is doing. Now, that's a term that, Oh yeah, my hemoglobin A1C is at 4. Okay. Well, what should it be at then? And you suddenly, hopefully, at that point you click in that you're speaking to a person who doesn't really understand the diabetes lingo. Now... You know, for hypoglycemia, you may want to use low. And, of course, there are some diabetics out there who want to sort of show how much knowledge there is, how much knowledge they have. And you need to... Don't be that person, is what I'm trying to say. You can be such the bigger person and describe now when I went to Toronto I had to take someone with me who could act if I couldn't act like if I had a severe low blood sugar they would have to hey he needs help uh, do this do this this is what his doctor usually does so I took him to a diabetic education center with myself 
and the nurse sat down and went over things. That's a big plus. And then I spent time with them. And we used diabetes for dummies. And I gave it to him. And he even kind of read some of it on the plane. I was totally amazed. And, you know, things started to click. I don't know today if I asked him what uh, diabetic ketoacidosis is or what's hypoglycemia, if he'd know. But for that two weeks, three weeks I was away? I think it was almost three weeks that I was away. He was my right-hand person. And, you know, that's the sort of thing that you need. You need it to be very informal, very to the action. Like, if any of you, I don't have one right here right now, have seen the um, uh, Mini Mad Meal, they kind of have a round top, and I kind of goof around and call them my golf balls. The pharmacy kind of knows, but the first time I went in there and said, Oh, I'll have some of my golf ball, please. What? You want what? I don't know what you're asking for. And it was kind of like, Oh, yeah, okay. You have to explain it. But just remember that when dealing with everyone. Now, I'm going to give you a non-diabetic story this time. I was involved in scouting for many years. And during my time, I went to God, what they call Wood Badge 1 and then Wood Badge 2. And during our Wood Badge 2 course, it was kind of like, well, you know, when you go back, and discuss things with everyone, even your families. They're probably just going to be, I don't know, yes, dear. You know, that fake laugh, yes, dear. But, you know, we're so excited we want to talk about it. Now, if any of you have at, been asked to speak to a group about your diabetes, you'll remember that use simplistic terms and again I'm not saying that they're stupid oh sorry Erich by all means I just want you to be aware that there may be an awful lot of questions now I did I don't necessarily call it teaching I was a trainer with a corporation for many years and you know, they, these trainees would come in and I'd be saying, oh yeah, this is how we do the pop and blah, 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 blah. And by the end of it, they're all kind of looking. Well, my God, what have I got myself into? And you know what? I can kind of remember that same sort of feeling. Now, I made it a point in grade 12 I was at a private boarding school and we had prefects, which are kind of like the seniors watching over the junior members. And there was always um, kind of a repetition, not repetition. Oh. But for years, it was always that they would have to come and do whatever they want. And some of these older kids would beat up these little kids. And, you know, it may not be harsh or anything, but during my time, I tried to stay away from doing anything like that. And that may be something you need to be aware of. I'm not saying go beat up. Go beat up people. But just understand where they're coming from. And learn. Sorry. We need to, you know, kind of grow our groups. And if you keep things simple, simple language, it's going to be easier for that person to learn and to grow. 
Hey, just think back to when you were learning everything. I hope you have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye-bye.